Welcome back. This is Elle the with the Stitching Field, and this is my channel about cross stitch. Today is January 1st, 2021. Sorry, I'm distracted. It, it's raining outside, but I thought I saw a change to snow. We haven't had snow yet, so I'll try not to be distracted by the weather. How are your holidays? Did you have a good New Year's Eve last night? I had a quiet New Year's Eve until midnight when the neighbors decided they were going to shoot off fireworks. Sounded like they were right outside my window, so I know they weren't far away. Let's hope this is a much better year than the last two. I shouldn't say it can't get much worse because I guess it could, but we deserve a really good year, don't we? So I'm going to get right into this today. I have a lot to show you. I have finishes. I have starts. I have whips. I have my list of 22 I'm going to be working on in 2022. And I have a finished parade for you. I'm going to show you each of the fit. It's not long because, well, I had a total of 13 finishes last year. So let's get right to it. There's going to be a lot of my inserting pictures, especially when we get to the finished parade and to my list of 22. But let's start with Nerthus. So here's what Nerthus will look like. I don't really know if I need to show you that because it's almost done. And here she is. And I know I can't get this in. Okay, so I've been working on this bottom. Now, the last time I left you, I had just over 18,000 stitches to do to finish the bottom. Let's see here. There we go. And last month, I did 11,136 stitches. I have 6,803 left. So that's all I have to do. So you can see I've just been finishing in the background and I've been picking the color and just color completing it. I have one last color to do that has 1,057 stitches and that's my last color that has, well, my next one will have 700. So this is going to be a finish very, very soon. Okay, so the next I was working on my week, I had, I had pieces picked out that I was going to work on by the week. And it did really well until I hit third week. And then I'll tell you what happened there. So the first one was the Dragonfly. This is from Cyber Stitchers. Uh, this is free that you could just download. It's called Dragonfly 2. And I finished it. So yeah, you can, so there you can see, um, she is in an eight and a half by 11 frame. You can see she just fits on the width there. And I'm getting a reflection from the fountain. There we go. So I was very happy with that. And that's on 18 count. And I can't tell you if it's Jade or if it's Icon. It's one of the two and that fabric is by Picture This Plus. The next one I pulled out that I was going to spend a week on was and a force grew and I was working on the bottom row so I had let's see if I can back up I had the top done and I didn't have the quotes in and you can see I finished it so I was so thrilled to have this done so let me go through and show you a couple of changes I made if I can find where they're at okay down here this little cartouche here you were supposed to put your initials and the date and I don't like putting my initials in because it makes me feel as if I'm trying to say I created this so I put the month and the year that I finished it which was December 2021 okay and in this little one I changed the quote and the quote here is by David Farr and it says when you go into the woods anything can happen and I, I just love the forest and the woods and anything that's outdoorsy Okay, and this large one, um, let me see if I can fold this up better. So in this large tree, I changed the quote. These were all religious quotes that she had, were both religious quotes. I shouldn't say all, there were only two. Okay, so here I put in a quote from Henry David Thoreau. Actually, I used two and I combined them. So the first one is from Walden and it says, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately and see if I could not learn what it had to teach. And not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. And then the bottom two lines there are from his writings in the Maine Woods. 
and it says, strange that so few ever come to the woods to see how the pine lives. And those are just, you know, the first one is, is a little well known. The second one is less well known. But I, I felt that, that kind of explained how I feel about the woods and the trees. So that was on to par. So the first week of December, I planned on working on the dragonfly. The second week, I planned on working on and a forest grew. And the third week, I planned on working on Nerthus. And then I planned another whip, and I wasn't feeling it. It was Christmas week, and I wanted Christmas stitching. So I pulled out Santa's Secret. This is by Dimensions, and I'll put a picture in here of what it'll look like. And there's where, well, I might as well just open it. There's where I got to. So you can see what I did here is I thought I would do color completion. I didn't realize though that color completion meant that there are really no colors that travel from Santa to the other side of the pattern. This right here is the far end and I have already hit 49.37% and I put in 5,000 597 stitches. So I simply started up in this upper left, upper left hand corner, picked a color and just followed it along until I had finished all the stitches in that color and then went back to that corner and picked another one. Then I thought, okay, let me fold this now. So then I thought, well, I'm going to finish off because you can see his fingers starting to come up here. And I thought, well, I'll finish that. So I started working on his lower lip. And that's when I realized that one of the colors I picked was in his face. And since I'm color completing, I had to go up to his face and finish all that flesh tone color. So you can kind of see where the hand will be. This shouldn't take too much longer to finish. I held off on stitching this because I, I was under the impression that dimension patterns were complicated and I don't know why I thought they were more complicated than a hay, but I did. And then I picked that up and went, wow, this is like super easy. Okay, so the next one was my birthday start. And my birthday was falls between Christmas and, and New Year's Eve. And this is one for sorrow. And here's a picture of that. And I don't know how much, yeah, you can see it. And that's where I got to. So one for sorrow, I ended up putting in 742 stitches. I've yet to even reach 1%. I wasn't feeling this. If you see, In the picture you saw, there's a lot of dark colors. So I was really surprised by how light this corner was, and I just didn't want to stitch on anything white. So it was time for a new start. So I pulled out Move On. And these new starts were all part of my 22. So I was just getting to start on January. So here's where I got to on Mulan. And Mulan has 1,368 stitches in it. This is on, oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, here, let me back up on fabrics. So <laughs> I'm out of practice. As usual, Santa's Secret. This is on a 14 count swipe art. Um, I'm making a few changes to this. Some of the colors were supposed to be one over one instead of two over one, and it was supposed to be stitched on 18 count, but I had a frame I wanted to use, and so I'm increasing this to a 14 count, so it will perfectly fit in that frame, and therefore everything will be done two over two, or two over one. Okay, and then when it comes one for sorrow, this is on a 20 count even weave. It's not an Ada. When I went to buy fabric, I couldn't find Ada, but this popped up and I thought, okay, it's 20 count. Now, back to Mulan. So Mulan is stitched on 18 count. Now, if I don't say each time, all of my white fabric is by Zweigart. It's just my favorite to stitch on. Okay, so now, that was all I worked on in December. So now let's do the finished parade. Now I'm gonna to have to look down at my notes here for this. I'll do this by month. So January, I did, I finished the chopping mall and I'll be putting pictures in here because 
I'm not going and taking these off the walls. This is by The Witchy Stitcher, and I finished it by attaching it to the back of stretcher bars that I painted a uh, black. This is Dachshund Yoga. This is by Little Room in the Attic, purchased off Etsy. Uh, this is on a scrap piece of fabric. I don't remember the name, but I think it was Glacier. It was a picture of this plus, and it was an opalescent. And this one I finished on a little wooden box that I stained for my granddaughter's birthday, and she uses it for her art supplies, her color pencils and that kind of thing. Okay, in March, I finished what was my New Year's start that year, and that was Welcome to New York by Magic Country Stitch. This is currently at my grandson's house, so obviously not here to show you. That one had roughly 24,000 stitches in it, so I was pretty impressed I finished that one in just a couple of months. In May, I finished One Afternoon by the artist is Carla Gerard, and it was um, charted by Artisy. And also in May, I finished Little Panda. This is by Cross Stitch Patterns, and it's an Etsy shop, and she spells patterns with one T. In July, I finished my 2017 Linen Threads Band Sampler. I also finished an ornament for my granddaughter for Christmas. Uh, it was the Christmas Dachshund, and that was by Patterns Cross Stitch on Etsy. In October, I finished all the pieces that I was going to stitch for my grandson's Plants vs. Zombies quilt. Um, in December, I finished it. I only took a partial picture of it, but you've seen all of the squares so you can get an idea. So here's the finished quilt. And here's the backing fabric that I found because I couldn't find Plants vs. Zombie pa uh, fabric. And he has, I gave it to him for Christmas and he has been with that blanket every minute since. He came and spent the night here the other night and he brought the blanket with him. Okay, also in October, I finished Luigi's Christmas. This was a, called the Mario Sampler by Choco Coco Stitch on Etsy. And I converted the one Mario uh, carrying a present to Luigi and I just put, took that and the Christmas tree. In November, I finished Stevie Ray by Wendy Kathleen and this was by Heaven and Earth. And then in December, I showed you I finished the Dragonfly and I finished a four screw, which I don't think I said is by Rosewood Manor. And, and that one was on Rose, um, and a four screw was on 18 count alchemy. So those are all my finishes. I had 13, which means I need to have 10 new starts. Three of them I just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my 22 and 22. But before I do, I'm going to give you the breakdown of how this works out. I will have 15 full coverage pieces and seven non-full coverage pieces. And like I said, I will have 10 new starts total. And size, I will have two that are less than 5,000, sorry, my nose, seven between 5,000 and 30,000 stitches, nine between 50,000 and 100,000, one between 100,000 and 200,000, and four between 200,000 and 300,000. So that's how it breaks down. So let me show you. First, I'm, I'm just going to insert pictures here. I did a whip parade in November, and most of the pieces have not had any work since then because I was working to finish things. So I'm just going to include a picture of what the chart will look like or what the finished design will look like. Sorry, my nose is itchy today. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to, there's seven from last year that I'm carrying forward. No, I take that back. There's nine. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten. All right, so the first ten. You can leave your hat on. This is by Heaven Earth Designs, and the artist is Sandra Santara. The second one is Lauren Harris. And I can show you this one. This is Lauren Harris's house in Caldwell, Lake Superior, Ontario, Canada. And this is by Aranko Originals. Okay. The next one is John Lennon. The artist is Jim Warren. And this is also by Heaven Earth Designs. The next one is Minnie Dia de Mortos. The artist is Alexandra V. Bach. 
and this is also a heaven and earth design. My next one is Fiona and Edward. I think I always say that backwards. I always say Edward and Fiona. Fiona and Edward by Kathy Barrick. The next one is, which way is up? That way is up. Is Dahlia by Donna Cooler Designs. I had this page folded, sorry about that. And so that's what that will look like. The next one is, I thought I brought that out. Uh, I'll put a picture in, I don't have that with me. Paula Vaughn, and I'm working on the October quilt. The ninth one is Luigi's Mansion. I charted this myself. This one is on 25 count, and this is my only one that I'm doing on 25 count, and then the only one I'm doing two over one ten stitch. The next one is Alice in Snow White, and this is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, also from Heaven and Earth. Now, those are the ones I'm carrying forward from last year. If you want to see where they currently are, the progress, and any of the details, well, if you want to know the details, you can ask me below. But if you want to see the progress or, or learn anything more about those, you can check them out in my whip parade that I just did in November. Okay, so my next ones. The first one is Daisy Blue. This is going to be my daily 100 piece. This is by Joe Lynch, and it is charted by Heaven Earth Designs. I'll be stitching this on a 14 count. This has... 2,600 stitches in it, I believe. So it'll easily get done before the end of the year by doing it 100 stitches a day. The next one is Grackles by Omar Rayam. This is also by Heaven Earth Designs and I'm stitching this on a 20 count even weave. The next one is Rainbow Feather Unicorn. I'm stitching this on 18 count that I dipped in. I'm gonna show you this real quickly. I dipped in light teal because there's a lot of white and light grays and I'm not stitching that on white. The artist for this is, we gotta find it again, Magdalena Orlowska, and it was charted by Unconventional X-Stitch. The next one is Mini Bitter Half. This is also Heaven Earth Design, and the, design, the artist is John Shannon, and this will be stitched on 18 count. The next one is Mini Hannah Lynn, by Han the artist is Hannah Wynn, and it's also charted by Heaven Earth Design. The next one is a sale I'm doing with Eliza from eCrafting in Colorado. We're starting this on January 10th. This is Peacock Daisy by Michelle Sayetta of Heaven Earth Designs, and this will be stitched on a 20 count even weave. The next one is North Pole Cookies. This is by Spooky and Steve on Etsy. And just to be a little bit different, I'm stitching this on earthen. I'm not sure. If, yeah, that's about right, right there. No. Yeah, it's about right. You can see some modeling in it. Today, it is doing nothing but pouring down rain. And so the lighting isn't that great, sorry. This is charted to be done on white, um, but I will display this in my kitchen, and my kitchen has a lot of white. The cabinets are white, and, and and I thought, you know, if you're in the North Pole, Santa's been around for centuries. I bet you that sign is pretty beaten up. So by putting it on earthen, um, it'll look different than everybody else's. Okay, the next one is a restart. This is Silver Landscape by Carriage House Samplings. And I didn't like the fabric that I had, so I found this. Yeah, I'm not. Blue never comes out right. Let's see if I... No, it's not. It's more of a gray than blue. Um, this is called Gathering Storm, and it's by My Vintage Needle Arts on Etsy. And then the remaining ones are the Santa Secret that I showed you, the One for Sorrow, Move On. And then I have two ornaments that I'll be stitching for my grandchildren. The first one, and, and so what I'll do, one ornament will count as 22. And when that is finished, I'll replace it with the next one. And so the first one is Penguin. This is by Green Terrace on Etsy. And the second one is Ghostbuster Ghost. 
and I'm going to make, this is by So Many Fiddly Bits, and I'll leave it on the screen here for a minute. So I'm going to change this. The top of his head, I'm going to change and give him a Santa hat, and then the circle, the red circle around him, I'm going to change and put either lights or ornament balls around it. So I'm going to decorate that out. So that's it. I This went a lot quicker than I thought it would go. So 22 and 2022. More about that. That is the brainchild of Debbie of Creatively Yours. I want to give credit where I heard that. Um, Debbie has, I think she said 54 whips and she wanted to narrow hers down and only work on 22 at a time. So anytime she has a finish, she's going to bring in one of her other whips to maintain 22 throughout the year. I have so many large pieces. I highly doubt that when I finish anything that I will bring in another piece. Um, I also have been given some thought to how am I going to make sure that I touch all of these pieces and give them some real progress. And I started toying around with a lot of ideas. I toyed around with a, a, a spinning wheel, decision wheel, but then it was, well, how many days do I give it? And the more I thought, I started thinking about Whipgo, how would that work? And Whipgo really didn't work for me, but the idea of two whips a day did. So here's how my, my month, my after January, how things are gonna work out. I have three focus pieces. The first one is the 100 stitches a day, which is Daisy Blue. The second is Luigi's Mansion, which my grandson asked for, and I would just like to give that to him and have that done. And the third one is Alice in White, Alice in White, <laughs> Alice in Snow White by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. That is one of my larger pieces, and I'd like to have that done midway next year. So in order to do that, I have to get quite a bit done this year. So I'm going to give Luigi's Mansion two days every week, and I'm going to give Alice in Snow White two days every week. That leaves three days a week. And I started thinking about two. Jessie Marie picks, Whip, Whipgo is the brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She has a Facebook group. She also has a video explaining it, so you can go check that out. I won't go real into depth with that because she does a much better job. But she spins and picks two numbers each month. Unless she picks a free space and then you get a third. And I thought, huh, the average month is four weeks. So if I pick two projects, split it between the four weeks, that would really round out my month. And then I ran the numbers on that and figured out that, yeah, I can get every piece touched and I can get some um, done a second time. So that's what you can look forward to this year. I like seeing a lot of progress. I don't like changing my whips on a regular basis. You know, I don't like to change them every day or every other day. So three days would be enough not to get bored. And of course, two days a week on the others. I think this will work out really great. So those are my plans moving forward. I'd love to hear what you're doing and what your plans are. Do you have any big starts planned? Let me know. Tell me below in the comments. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. I will answer all questions. I love your comments. They're just great. And with that, I'm going to wish you a very happy new year. And I will see you again on February 1st. Thank you for being here. I'll see you again.